Okay, so um, the next 15 to 20 minutes we're going to talk a bit about uh, bathing and sleep, a bit about the theory behind why bathing is important for sleep and the impact more importantly on occupation and care and uh, client engagement. So, first thing just to understand is what is the definition of bathing? So, that's the dictionary definition of, of bathing. Um, so, a washing or immersion of something, especially the body, in water for cleansing. But we need to question is that all bathing is for? Um, I know I don't necessarily, my personal experience of bathing is that I don't necessarily bathe to get clean. I'm more likely to get in the bath to play with one of my uh, children because it's part of their daily routine. So I might get in the bath with a baby, I might get in the bath to relax and wine. It certainly isn't just to get clean. If I want to get clean, I probably have a shower. It's looking at, um, so, so why do I bathe or why do we bathe? What is the occupation behind bathing? So if we accept that bathing is an occupation and not just uh, a, a single one-off task for cleansing. So the definition of occupation is, uh, this is WFOT's definition, and the everyday activities that people do as individuals, in families and with communities to occupy time and bring meaning and purpose to life. Occupations include things people need to do, want to and are expected to do. So as OTs we believe that bathing, or we should believe that bathing isn't just about maintaining personal care, and, and based on what I've just said before there, we accept that there are many reasons why we might bathe. So bathing itself should therefore be considered just as an important and meaningful occupation as anything else that we consider, rather than simply as a mode for cleaning. But the important thing within this session is, why is that important? So why is it important that we consider bathing as a meaningful occupation? So I know that bathing in my family, I'm going to use references to my own family in the next 15 minutes because it's my own experience and I'm sure you'll, you'll have your own experiences. So bathing within my family is part of daily routine. So it establishes a bedtime for my children. They know when they have a bath, then it's time to um, read a book, it's time to have some supper, it's time to wind down, and then hopefully we go to bed and go to sleep when we want them to. That's the idea. The interesting thing though clinically is that, is that something that we accept for every client group? So clinically, so take my family life out of it, clinically when I go to see um, a client, maybe an elderly client, do I consider the importance of daily routine within their bathing schedule? Or am I simply thinking about bathing as something that they have to do to get clean? And am I considering the importance of bathing on what might come next. And I think the reality is, for a lot of OTs, the answer is probably no, but within children, maybe more so, because if we have families or we know families, we know it's a significant part of that routine. So we need to think about, if it's not something we're considering enough of, then why not? So what do you look at when, you're, um, when you are considering bathing in your job? Now, in, again, in my experience, yours might be completely different, but in my experience, bathing has become or has been a transfer assessment. So it's about how does somebody safely get in and out of the bath. But that isn't occupational focused. That's about, that's just as meaningful as how does somebody stand up. So the, the importance is we're not looking at how does somebody get in and out of the bath, but asking ourselves, why are they getting in and out of the bath? Why is it important to them? You might have a completely different experience of, of a bathing assessment, but in, certainly in my acute experience, it's become very much what bit of equipment supports them to get in and out safely. And I just, I don't think that's enough. So if we do that, it undervalues bathing as an occupation. So what's the link between bathing and sleep? That's what this session is, is about overall. So when we're thinking about sleep, we're talking about sleep because it's part of that routine, it's part of that daily routine. We accept probably that, uh, certainly as a father, that um, my children have always been in that routine of bath before bedtime. But what I don't understand is why, it's just, it's just something you do. But actually, there's an awful lot of evidence to, to back that up. 
So in 1999, a large, and I think if I get some of these name pronunciations wrong, I apologise if you know these people. So in 1999, a large research study was conducted by Kyoko Kanda, which considered the impact of bathing on the elderly, which in this study classed as 65 plus, and I think generally in community services it still classes as 65 plus, but clinically you would probably accept that 65 to 70 isn't really that elderly anymore, but the research still stands. So this, 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 this research on um, in the elderly, 65 plus, and in young adults, we were, were between 17 and 22. So it found that a bath, following a bath, the first three hours of sleep, all participants in both those groups presented with less physical movement, and rhetorically, all clients said that they felt like they had a higher quality sleep. The empirical data was slightly better for the older age group than the younger. But it did show that, so just to reinforce that, it showed, it showed that after a bath, the first three hours of sleep was more settled. People were in a deeper sleep and said that they felt that their overall sleep was of a higher quality. Just before that, in 1997, uh, Joyce Walsleben, who was Associate Professor at New York University School of Medicine, conducted a study with her team. And that showed that our body temperature drops through the day as we prepare for sleep, hence why you might start to feel cold if you're, if you're tired, or you'd be really shivery if you're exhausted. So over the day, our body temperature drops slightly as it prepares for rest and sleep. So they charted the body temperature, um, both skin and internal temperature, of groups who bathed, showered, or did neither, and then compared the results. So control trial, some bathed, some showered, some did neither and went to bed, and then they monitored sleep patterns. So they compared it to data, um, including you know, things like uh, uh, REM, blood pressure, heart rate, physical movements in, uh, in a state of sleep. And it categorically showed that the group who bathed were more rested and had a much higher quality sleep. So it showed that body temperature, as the body temperature prepares for sleep, it cools down. So if we raise the temperature pre-sleep, ideally by one to two degrees, the rapid cooling post-bathing then allows the body to have a much a significantly higher quality of sleep. So the whole idea of we bathe our children before bed, and we don't really know why, because I certainly didn't, but the science backs up that it prepares children for sleep because it's raising their body temperature, then they get out the bath, their body temperature rapidly cools because it's getting back down to normal, and that makes you sleepy. Yeah? So it's using this, the science of our normal day, our, our normal physiology, in that it cools, to then um, to, to kind of heighten that, it enhances that. The interesting thing there though, if you think, it, it did show that there were some benefits to showering, because again it raised the body temperature, but the, 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 the evidence was that the, the group that benefited the most, the most significant impact on the quality of sleep was bathing, because they were immersed in that water, yeah? So their body temperature rose to a slightly higher level, which allowed it to drop to a um, to its original level in the same period of time. So as much as showering was good, it wasn't as good as bathing. Well, that's really interesting research, because I don't think a lot of people actually under know that. We just, we think of bathing as part of sleep without understanding the theory and the research. So let's think about the impact of that on our clients. And I've talked a lot about children, but I also, but I think, um, going back to my, one of my very first questions, is why are we not applying that same theory to older adults or any adult who might need it? So the impact on that research on our client groups, so I'm um, saying client groups, I mean anybody. I don't just mean children, I mean absolutely anybody you see. So the American Academy of Sleep Medicine said that there are many benefits to getting both the quantity and the quality of night's sleep that you need. In general, they say sleep provides your mind and body with a power boost. It gives you a fresh start every day. More specifically, sleep has a variety of positive effects, direct effects on your health and well-being. So firstly, sleep is a major contributor to your physical health. It gives you greater energy so that you're able to be more active during the day. It also helps your uh, body fight illness by boosting the defenses response to your immune system. Um, sleep guards your heart by reducing the risk of blood pressure and heart attack. 
It reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes by helping your body maintain proper blood sugar levels. These are all kind of themes and, and um, uh, research studies that show the benefit of, of high quality sleep. Sleep could even help manage your weight. It helps your body regulate your hormones and control your appetite and metabolism. Secondly, sleep is a key component to your mental well-being. When you're well rested, you tend to feel happier, more optimistic. It helps you reduce feelings of frustration, etc., etc. Thirdly, sleep enhances your cognitive abilities. And this is all, as I said, we just saying that this is based on research from the Sleep Foundation. It helps you focus and think more creatively. It helps you solve problems and remember important information. For students, sleep can uh, be a secret of um, success in the classroom. Uh, which is why I probably struggled a bit when I was there. Finally, sleep promotes safety by improving your alertness, which reduces the risk of injuries and accidents. Um, so it helps you make good decisions. It improves your judgment. We could, the list could go on and on and on and on. What I'm trying to get at is, if, if, if we promoted the, uh, sleep hygiene and the quality of sleep, and it facilitated even a small amount of improvement in those areas of activity analysis, what, what impact would that have both for the client and for their carer? So for the carer, consider the points that we've gone through about what's, how sleep can, can help the individual. So consider as the carer, if, you're, if your person you were caring for was more alert, was more able to risk assess, was less challenging. I've used the term challenging in inverted commas because I don't particularly like it, but I couldn't think of a better one at the time. But you know what I mean by challenging, less cooperative potentially. And was more engaged in the meaningful activity. What would the, what would the impact on your life be as the carer? So to summarise that, we need to focus on bathing as an occupation, accept that it isn't just about a transfer, we bathe for a purpose whether it is to cleanse for some people, whether it's to play with the children, whether it's to facilitate a sleep routine, whether it's to uh, relax with a glass of wine and a candle, whether it's more often than not, people don't just bathe because they want to get clean. Bathing is an important part of their daily routine and we need to start unpicking a bit more about why that is, whether it be to facilitate sleep, whether it be for any other meaningful occupation purpose. But like I've said before, it is interesting how we focus on, we seem to focus on bathing for children as pre-bedtime. But think of that person as an adult. You're caring for an adult or an, um, an older adult. And think about the transferable benefits. So we do it for children, so why not do it for others? Now that you know the theory, there's no reason why you shouldn't. It's got to be a client-centered approach. So again, what is bathing to them? Bathing just isn't a blanket. This is why we do it. It's about that holistic, client-centered assessment. Why do you bathe? That's got to be the starting point. It's got to be occupational focused. Like I say, bathing isn't a transfer assessment. It's an occupational assessment. It isn't just about how do you get in and out. It's why do you do it? How can we support you maintaining that meaningful engagement? We can um, maximize occupational performance by understanding the theory behind bathing and sleep, now that we know what the benefits of sleep are, and we know what the theory is behind bathing, body temperature, reduction in body temperature, facilitating sleep, then why are we not um, using that as part of our holistic assessment for everybody? So we're not just thinking, somebody's struggling to get in out of the bath, let's go shower, because we know that the research that I presented very briefly shows that bathing has a much bigger impact on sleep than showering. So there's got to be more, that jump between bathing to shower, you are only focusing on transfer. You're not thinking why is bathing important. And understand the significant relationship between bathing and sleep. It's there, it's evidence-based. The research shows that bathing, where, it's, where you raise it, sorry in case you missed it, Bathing that raises your body temperature by one to two degrees, then has a significant impact on the quality of sleep and body movement, in, certainly in the first three hours of sleep. Um, but one of the researchers shows that um, when, when they, um, they did a, a randomized control trial on bathing, showering, and none of them, the, the bathing group 
had um, a much more significant high quality sleep um, and they slept for longer and the impact on their day the following day on their engagement and occupation was far higher. So it's a whistle stop tour in Strong Stand, it's 15 minutes or so. Um, but it's really important that you understand the evidence and the links between bathing, the research behind that, and then how that impacts on sleep. And then, more importantly than that, the impact of a good night's sleep on somebody's ability to engage in meaningful occupations and the impact on, therefore, on their carers. Okay? Thank you.